Good morning, uh, Chris Daughters and Jay Nicholas. He's on the camera, I'm on the vice. I'm getting nothing but criticism this morning. This is an elk hair caddis tied on a long hook, uh, 5262 size 10. Of course, Chris, Chris's first comment was, mmm, a nice sinking, another nice sinking dry fly. Well, have I got news for you, Mr. Daughters. It's not going to sink? Well, sure it's going to sink, you know, eventually, but... Oh, by the way, the, the this... I'm never satisfied, just one of those guys, never can handle a dubbing color straight off the rack. This is a combination of dubbings. It, I, I like the McKenzie Caddis Green, but it's a little bit too bright green for me. So, and it doesn't have quite the right sparkle, so I hand blend in a little bit of uh, olive brown ice dub. So it's just the right color. By the way, these, if you will see these bugs um, exhibit a range of colors. Now, I'm, I'm here in the background. Chris has given me a really nice grizzly neck here that he's picked out all the best feathers from the center of the cape and left me nothing but the the very questionable feathers on the side so you know if I have any difficulties it's his fault I'm here for you uh, always so I'm gonna tie oh this is man you know these hooks I used to tie these down to 20s not anymore tied in by the butt and wound towards the rear of the hook and please let me not lose hold of this hackle and then I put the copper wire over very carefully we're almost there. We're almost there. There we go. And I start my rib forward. So I, I've learned that this copper wire is uh, more durable than monofilament, and it actually weighs less than monofilament. So really, yeah, that, that's yeah. High tech copper wire. High tech copper wire. So the other, the other thing about these bugs is that this is tied as a dry fly. However, you should know that, I mean, if Chris actually spent any time out there on the river guiding and observing, instead of just being here in the shop criticizing me, he would know that these, that the trout will often take these bugs most aggressively as they are emerging. So sometimes, and at that point, their wings are not, um, they're not real full. So at times like that, I actually like a fly that I can fish, act not, not dead drift, fish it with an active twitch and it, it kind of bubbles and gurgles and pops and comes to the surface and then it dives down and that really is sometimes the best way to entice those fish. Now the reason I'm fiddling with this is that it's been about 20 years since I've tied a dry fly. but Slight exaggeration. Not much of an exaggeration. So now I'm I'm gonna do something unusual here. These these bugs have big. They're 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 one of the the uh, most rotund of the caddis. These are very juicy bugs, and they have a dark colored head. And so I like to put some of these flies. So this ice dub at the head. 
And I know Chris is thinking it. He says, hmm, more reason for this fly to sink. Well, now that I understand you're just going to fish this subsurface, this dry fly, that, that's making a lot of sense. <laughs> it, it's the damp, the damp twitched fly. You know, the Mackenzie is an unusual river. If, if, if you fish the Metolius, you don't catch very many fish on a fly that isn't, doesn't have a perfect dead drift. But on the Mackenzie and the Deschutes, you twitch a fly, fish it against the current, and you will have a lot of success. So here, here you go, the black-headed Mackenzie caddis type.